first, I'm just going to show you my original Swamp Thing from last year. So I made this one using a base of cardboard and paper mache with an outer shell of waterproof plaster bandage. Um, obviously and unfortunately, this didn't last because whilst the outside shell was waterproofed, the insides just turned to bits and collapsed in on itself. But through the spring and the summer, when we had quite good weather, it did really well, it grew really wild, but as soon as it hit autumn and winter, it just it, it turned to rubble. So this new one should work a bit better. I've made some improvements since, and uh, I think I've fixed some of the problems. What you're going to need, a quick sort of equipment list and tools. Firstly, you're going to need a large plant pot that is gonna, uh, your model's going to sit in. You're going to need compost. You're going to need seeds of your choice. Uh, this year, I've gone with vines and lobelias. They're like, um, I think they're like a blue flower. Um, last year, I used watercress, and that worked really well for me on terms of getting some growth out of it. Um, so if you're starting this for the first time, I would recommend watercress. It grows really well um, in these sort of conditions. You're also then going to need a waterproof box which will fit inside your pot. Um, plastic would work best if you can get a plant pot that will fit inside it. This is going to act as the, um, the chest and shoulder areas of your model. So you're looking for a rectangular shape. Now I made my own from wood and I waterproofed it. Um, so that's obviously an option that you could do. Um, you're also then going to need a foam mannequin head. Um, you can order those online. I think I got mine for about £3. And you're going to need LED solar string lights in red. Um, I think they are, again, I, I ordered those online. They're about £7. Um, and what you're really looking for here is you need um, string lights which have a separate solar receiver. So one that has a stake with a solar panel in it and a wire leading up to the lights. The reason for this is we're going to bury these wires into the head. And a lot of the times when you look for solar lights online, a lot of them is a solar panel sitting on top of a, uh, a light bulb, which we don't want because we don't want a solar panel on top of something's head. We want it elsewhere external. You're also then going to need PVA glue, air drying clay, um, plaster bandages, the ones that I use are called Mod Rock. So if I refer to Mod Rock at any point, they're plaster bandages. That's the brand that I'm using. Um, acrylic paints, in particular, you're going to want green, obviously. Brown, yellow, white, and red. I also used glow in the dark paint. That's optional if you want to use that. Um, it's not really worked so well for me, but you might be able to find a better brand. Black spray paint and ideally you want a cheap green spray paint uh, you're after a green spray paint that doesn't have a primer unfortunately the one that i used did have a primer so i'll explain what i did to resolve that then in terms of tools you're going to need paint brushes a hot glue gun um craft knife a drill and a dremel um you don't really need a dremel but it it helped me out a lot when it came to carving out the head. So step one, purchase or build your stuff. If you're building a, uh, if you're building a wooden box, build your wooden box first. Otherwise, buy your stuff and then try and follow along with these steps as you're waiting for these things to come in through the post. Some of them may take a month like, like they did for me. Step two, cut the mannequin head to shape. What you wanna do, make sure you've got a reference image of Swamp Thing available. That'll make things a lot um, that'll make things a lot easier. So you're gonna cut off the nose to create a skull-shaped nostril. Um, you're looking for like a Voldemort type job. Cut the neck to fit onto the box if it, if there's a neck attached. If you're fitting lights for the eyes, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to cut out the eyes, and then in the back of the head you're gonna cut out a hole, and that hole needs to reach the eye holes. Um, you want to try and cut the back of the head in a clean piece like a panel because we're going to use that to fill it back in later we're going to push so if you cut a rectangle out of the back of the head try and keep that in one block as much as you can it won't be perfect because you've got to drill into this like you're carving a pumpkin um, but try and keep as much of that back as you can step three you're going to waterproof your head using PVA glue you're going to want to do this every time you add a new layer to protect against weathering. Step four, use a hot glue gun to glue the head to the box. 
Step 5. Use air drying modelling clay to create the Swamp Thing facial features. This includes a thick brow, a thick vine that drapes over the nostril and down between his mouth and cheeks, um, sort of like a moustache that goes over the nose. And then you're also going to want to add a thick branch-like rib cage. And finally, optional, um, you are going to want to create vines and things to just place randomly. Uh, keep it simple, but just roll up sort of sausages using the air drying clay and just stick them in random places around the head. Then, PVA the whole thing uh, to seal the clay and to waterproof it. Just a quick edit point here. What I did was I used some of the cutaway polystyrene pieces to pad out the shoulder area, which is going to basically form the shoulders and neck of Swamp Thing, so that the plaster bandages have something to actually stick onto. I also then PVA'd these so that they would be waterproof on the next step. Step six, we're going to mod rock the entire piece, leaving only the back panel section clear because um, we're going to do that in a later point. So you, you cut the mod rock into small squares, then dip each one individually into water and drape the plaster bandages over the clay pieces to make it all uniform. Um, it's kind of like paper mache in but with plaster instead of newspaper. Uh, this takes a few minutes to be touch dry, but we're going to leave it overnight to fully cure anyway. Step 7, once that's dry, spray paint the entire model black. Step 8, we're going to use white acrylic paint and dry brush the model. Step 9, we're then going to spray paint the entire model green. Now. If you're using a spray paint that doesn't have a primer, this should work fine. The idea is all the areas that are white are going to turn green and all the areas that are black are going to stay black. Now, step 10, my spray paint uh, included a primer, so this didn't work for me. It just caked the entire thing green. So what I had to do was I had to uh, use the acrylic paints to paint the detail back in. And I also used a diluted ink wash uh, of Indian ink that sort of replicated that dry brush effect that I wanted. It darkened the whole thing off and all the black ink seeped into the cracks and was repelled by the waterproof spray paint. If this happens to you, just use what paints you have, have available to try and paint it back to how you want it to look. Step 11. Paint the inside of the head white and you're going to want to let that dry overnight. And then the next day, paint that same inside of the head with a really bright red paint. The reason we've done this is if you paint red onto white, it stands out more. Um, if you left it green or you spray painted it black or green or whatever, that red won't show up. And we want that red really bright for when these lights go on. Step 12, insert the LED lights through the back of the head. Um, and into the eye spaces. You don't want it coming out the eyes, you just want to sort of bunch them all in there, cram them in. Um, I even used a marker pen just to help push them right to the front of the eyes. Put, then, push that back piece of polystyrene that we uh, kept for later, make sure we've been waterproofing that as well, back into the gap, and that's going to hold those wires in place. Step 13, add a sheet of mod rock over the gap to seal it in. Step 14, drill holes in through to the box. So this is where your sunlight and water is going to reach your plants when they and where they eventually grow out of. Um, I also added strips of foil inside the box to help, amplify, to help amplify the sunlight coming in. So the sunlight and the water is going to come in through these holes that you drill. And ideally, any sunlight is going to hit the tin foil that's inside the box and just sort of boost it so that where otherwise these plants are going to be in darkness, there is sort of quite a lot of light getting into them now. Step 15, once the mod rock has dried, use your acrylic paints to, to paint the new mod rock piece to fit in with the rest of the model. Um, you may also need to use this paint to patch up where you've drilled the holes. Once this is done, PVA the entire model multiple times, allowing enough drying times between each coat. I think I did mine about maybe four times. Um... So it took about four days to fully seal this thing. Also at this point, what you might want to do is um, take a little bit of 
the red acrylic paint and if the, you have got any wires exposed just give those a quick lick of paint through the eyes where you can see it without painting too much over the light bulbs themselves and that'll just help colour those in. Step 16, which is your final step to the model, is to add any embellishments you might have picked up. Um, I would suggest going to a craft store or something like that or whatever you have, whatever you have lying around the house um, and see if you can get any sort of plant kind of embellishments. So what I used was I had some uh, old leftover um, metal rose heads that I spray painted green and I hot glued those onto it and some fake flowers and fake uh, grass which again I just hot glued onto that. It just sort of helps bring this whole thing together. Step 17 is planting your model into the pot. So the first thing I did was I filled my pot about a quarter full with compost I then pushed the model into the soil, which created a guide uh, left in the soil, like a rectangle. I planted my first seeds, which is the vines, within the box outline left behind, and the added, and then added a little more compost to the center before placing my swamp thing in. I then filled the surrounding areas with compost and planted my labelli seeds around the model. Finally, I wrapped the excess solar light because there was quite a bit of uh, slack uh, around the stake and planted that into the back of the pot. Months ish, about a month since I finished this swamp thing. Um, not got any major growth on it yet, but we have got some sprouts coming up just around here, a couple around here, some around the back, um, and I have checked on the inside of this, and there's the vines growing. Can't actually see through the holes, but they are growing. Um, in the center of the box um, One thing that I have had to do is every time that um, That it's been raining we've had some bad weather, but every time it's been raining for some reason the PVA glue has been uh, reactivating all around um, So it, it's it stayed uh, It stayed waterproof But every time it rains this swamp thing just turns white. So what I've done is I've put an acrylic glaze over the whole thing um, so I'd recommend maybe some kind of acrylic varnish or clear varnish or something just to, you know, sort of pull it together, uh, stop it from doing that if yours is doing that, I'm hoping mine will work. Also a few of these have come off, um, there's actually I think only two still, still intact, so I'm just going to have to glue these back on at some point, but I'm just waiting for the weather to get a bit better. And then I'm gonna fix this up. I think a couple more weeks, and um, we should probably have some kind of growth coming out of the holes. Um, but I think the flowers are gonna come up first this time. So yeah, that's where it's looking at about now. Just a quick update on the swamp thing planter. Um, it's been about two months since um, all this was planted. Maybe even a bit longer now. Um, the outskirt sort of flowers are growing quite well. Uh, no, no flowers on them yet, but it's uh, they're growing, which is the main thing. Um, I've just lifted the planter up. I'm trying not to do that too much because every time I do, the soil sort of sinks back downwards. Um, but I've just checked to see how the vines are growing, and they've not done so well. They've basically grown up and then flopped over because there's nothing to hold on to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get hold of some um, watercress seeds and just drop these into the holes and then they should grow quite well because they grew uh, last year um, quite well. Uh, I've also extended some of the holes a little bit just so I can see better um, what progress is going on inside there but it's, they're still kind of too small to tell. So yeah, hopefully watercress will work and by the time that 
should start to come up, they should be out as well by then. Okay, I'm going to try and make this my last update on this uh, this particular video for the old Swamp Thing uh, garden planter. Uh, it's been a few months now and obviously these are growing through quite well. A um, couple more uh, couple more weeks and they should start to flourish really, really wild. Um, I've planted some crest seeds into the top holes and it only, taken, uh, it only took a couple of days and they've grown through quite quickly. So our four recommendation, uh, the ones that will go into the holes use crest seeds, watercress, because it just takes, I don't know, maybe three days or so to grow before it gets some sprouts and they grow quite tall as well. Um, so yeah, that's where it's at. What I'll try and do is I'll try and do a follow-up video once this is fully grown um, or at its peak at least so you can see sort of how wild it gets. The last one got really sort of uh, crazy. So that's it for this one and see you on there. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. I know it's a little bit all over the place but I hope that even if the instructions are a little bit off you're still able to find the inspiration and ingenuity to put one of these together yourself. I don't normally do these 3D type of projects, but if you would like to see more of the stuff that I do and support it anyway, you can find my artwork on Facebook by searching for Luke Tomlinson Art or on Instagram at Luke underscore Tomlinson underscore artwork. The, uh, the links are on the screen at the moment. Uh, on here you can purchase original artwork, order commissions, and you can find links to my print stores on Redbubble, TeePublic and Fine Art America. All of this is very much appreciated. If you do build your own Swamp Thing planter, I would love to see them, so you can also send those to my Facebook or Instagram pages and I'll do my best to share your creations with my page. Um, I would just, I'd love to see what other, people, uh, other people's take on this. Good luck everyone, I hope this helps and take care.